Hello, my wonderful Nigerian brothers and sisters. Hey, and I know say Mata for APC. That Mata is always get killed. And I still remember this uh, the prophet, I be the founder of Unri Evangelical uh, uh, Fellowship or whatever it's being called. Primate Ayodele, and I know say this man and a complete Yoruba man where they speak. Um, and I cannot say he, is a, he used to speak anyhow, but he always hit the nail on the head. He want Nigerians when uh, this uh, the 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 the, um, uh, the emergence of uh, Bola Metrumbu. He said it's a very very bad omen for the country because this man will do everything humanly possible to win the election, and they did it, and they succeeded. This man again, don't come out again, come cry you on top of his voice. Come they tell every Nigerian where they expect anything good to come out from this government. He said, Nehi Kaba, that there's nothing of such. Make when I hear how we take Tokam. I'll be right back. Tunumbu government has no any single solution to economic hardship in Nigeria. Primate Ayodele warns the whole Nigerian. Make on no say, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. Hey, now eight another eight years of hardship under the same political party, all poverty congress, which is APC. I don't know how we take get to this point. They have already started their propaganda. Going to India, they tell us they secured a fourteen billion dollars uh, investment from a uh, businessman there, but uh, today. As I'm talking to you now, no any single of any businessman have come out uh, to give a very um, open uh, uh, um, acceptance speech or acceptance, you know, you know that kind of a thing now to let the people know that yes, truly we are about to invest in Nigeria. That is the first lies they told Nigerians. The second lie they told us that they use one stone to kill a two bed. Coming from uh, India, they do stop over at the Abu Dhabi, UAE. United Arab Emirates. You know, it's not even up to six hours they stop over there. The next one we had is the, the presidential uh, spokesperson, so called uh, Aduri Ngelele, came out on a broad daylight and tell us that the, the visa ban on Nigeria had been lifted and uh, uh, Dubai Airways, Emirates, and the rest of them will start to apply Nigerians. Now, so everybody just they happy, they clap hand. The same Aguri Ngelele, Abi Aguri Ngelele, Abi Aguri used to call his name, I don't even know where this, this one come from, came back again on Chinese television's uh, morning show and said that Nigerians do not expect it uh, to be on a platter of gold, that nothing goes for nothing. He used his hand to implicate himself. Now the so-called uh, president of the APC is trying to investigate who made the, the broadcast. Who again, if not your personal and special advisor, will be Aguri Ngelele and spokesperson. Anyway, my wonderful dear friend, brothers and sisters, the Nigerian people, if on our Greece here or the day Nigeria, and uh, the world, I beg, I don't come again uh, with another blockbuster. And I still remember, I tell on uh, this morning, say, you're going to be fire for fire. Make on a see what thing they happen for about you. The police, where they protect lands and property, have been kidnapped <laughs> by kidnappers. <laughs> God have mercy. I beg you, who do we offend in this country? Police, where are supposed to catch now? Now. Kidnappers don't kidnap uh, police. Well, that is another story when we come back. Uh, bandits don't kill too. Kidnap today. All in Southern Kaduna. And I still remember saying this Southern Kaduna, everything that happened there. Everything, Urishi, Urishi, now they happen for that place. Now, so so, Kiki, they, they kill everybody. Now, so so, Pai Pai, they buy all the Christians where they did. I don't even know how and what is going to be done to curtail all this. Um, uh, all this menace that is ravaging the public or the general public. Any anyway, my wonderful people, my friends and subscribers, I beg you, help me share this message. Make an announcement. say, this government, if you are expecting anything, my dear, tighten your claw to for another good eight years. All the whole people that is dancing around, shouting Jagaban, Jagaban, he don't reach, he don't reach now. Because, OKK and Okafo, Monsoy Sofaiti, Aboki, Webi, Idrisi, and Adejobi, Webi Yoruba, and also, okay, to go away, people more surely <laughs> reap from reap uh, what they sow. Orogonu, no mume, Tunumbo government has no solution to economic hardship. I beg, help me share this message, like, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. 
the leader of Uri Evangelical Spiritual Church, Premier Tayo Dele, on Sunday, claimed that Bolame the Tunumbu's administration has no any single solution to the economic hardship that we are facing in Nigeria today. Premier Tayo Dele urged Nigerians to prepare for more difficult times. <laughs> this one, not too much with Begeo. He stated that the country will not survive without borrowing money and it will lead to the incapac incapacity of so many states. Uh, yes, now, nah. Buhari brought us to 77 trillion naira from 45, I be from 30 something trillion naira. To 77, as I'm talking to you now, under 100 days, the debt don't rise to 87 trillion naira. That is what Nigeria is owing. Very soon now, nah, the country will break. No, the country will collapse and everybody will go their home. A statement by Ayodele's spokesperson, Uluwa Tosin Osho, said the economic, the, the economy will keep uh, fluctuating and for the next four years, Nigeria will keep struggling. The man of God pointed out that one of the solutions to eradicating economic hardship is by fighting corruption. Whom and whom are you going to fight? Since he, he refused to probe Buhari, who is the chairman and the chief executive and the uh, commander-in-chief of corruption. He are probing uh, his uh, workers. Is that not a no to do with that? Premier Dalladele also reacted to the statement of a BUA chairman to reduce cement price to 3,000 Naira. According to Ayodele, I want to advise the Minister of Finance and the CBN governor that there is no way Nigeria will survive without borrowing. So many states will be incapacitated if the country doesn't borrow. Nigeria's economy is sitting on a time bomb. The government will not get the solution to economic troubles. We will continue to suffer this for the next four good years. The so-called president needs so much work in the economy. If you don't fight corruption, you can't eradicate economic hardship and I don't see that fight happening. The CBN governor is sitting on a hot seat. BUH Cement said he will bring down cement to 3,000. I am not seeing the possibility because things will get tougher as we proceed. Gunmen were there for Bauchi. They don't kidnap a police officer who have been sent out there to protect life from property. Hey, Wahala, no definition. Government have kidnapped one person believed to be a serving police officer in Toro local government area uh, of Bauchi State. The incident is coming a few hours after security agencies secured the release of 33 kidnapped victims in Al Kaleri local government area of the state. Toro town, according to a source, was thrown into confusion on Friday night when the government invaded the area. It was gathered at the hoodlum to fire the sporadic gunshot, scaring residents before abducting a serving police officer and assistant superintendent of police for that matter, ASP. The activities of kidnappers has affected economic activities in Toro local government area as residents are afraid of going about their normal businesses for fear of being kidnapped. Asemai Haruna Dabo. The member representing Toro Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives condemned the incident and called for calm. He described the incident as unfortunate and regrettable considering the current economic situation in the country and assured the people of his continued legislative interventions to bring an end to the menace. Efforts to get the reactions of the Bauchi State Police Command were not successful as SP Ahmed Wakili the public relations officer did not respond to phone calls. Banditi, key to kidnapped in Kaduna community. The Kaduna State Police Command has confirmed that two persons were killed and three other, uh, others kidnapped by suspected bandits on September 15 in a community in the state. The command's acting public relations officer, Mr. Mansur Hassan, confirmed the development in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria on Sunday in Kaduna. Hassan said that the incident occurred in the Dogon Noma Ongwan Gamu community in the Kajeru local government area of the state. He said the bandits invaded the community at about 6.30 a.m., killing and abducting the victims. 
The spokesman assured that the bandits will be arrested to face the wrath of the law. Story, story, story. UAE visa ban issue was just a tip of the iceberg. More fake news coming from Tunumbu, Atiko's head, laments. The camp of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, presidential candidate in the 2023 presidential selection, Atiko Abubakar, has alleged that the administration of Bolambe Tunumbu is said to unleash a plethora of propaganda on Nigerians, all in the form of state politics. <laughs> well, I know the finish. The special assistant to Atiku on public communication, where the name be Frank Shaibu, in a statement on Sunday, said the news regarding the lifting of the visa ban by the United Arab Emirates, which turned out to be not uh, to be not uh, as exactly reported by the Tunumbu's media head, Aduri Ingalele, was just a tip of the iceberg, according to Frank Schwaibu. Schwaibu alleged that for that, for that, that the Tunumbu <laughs> had already appointed over 15 media heads with the sole aim of pushing misinformation as a policy of the state and distracting Nigerians from the deep pains his administration has caused them. He submitted that the part of the plans by the so-called president of Nigeria is to tell Nigerians that his government has attracted foreign investment amounting to $100 billion and other audio investment but fail to provide key details on that regard. Articles A added that a plan by the Tunumbu is to detract Nigerians from the hardship brought upon them by the current administration and also the last administration. Articles A said, from information available to us, Bola Tunumbu is said to push propaganda to overdrive as he heads out for the United Nations General Assembly. He will claim to have attracted foreign investment amounting to $100 billion, but we fail to provide key details. It is all propaganda. It is all a load of baloney. In India, he claimed they have received pledges of over $14 billion just as his predecessor, President Muhammad Buhari, claimed in 2018 that he has secured pledges of up to $6 billion. This is nothing but audio investments. Last month, the NNPC claimed to have obtained a loan of $3 billion with which it would help stabilize the Naira. We raised the alarm that it was all a rose to deceive Nigerians. Now, we have been justified as the Naira is now approaching $1 to 1,000 Naira on the black market. What a failed priority. After his trip to UAE, Tunumbu claimed the visa ban had been lifted immediately. Now they have shifted the goalpost after the UAE authorities revealed that the news was false. This is the sort of embarrassment Nigeria will continue to attract in this season of Balabulu Bulabas. <laughs> this guy don't finish uh, this man. Though. The report by the FTSC revealed that Tunumbu's uh, so-called uh, FS unification policy was failing. And Nigeria was uh, degraded from frontier market to unclassified, having failed to bring economic rebirth. He has now recruited over 15 media heads instead of recruiting more economic experts. 15 media heads to share propaganda all over the social media. <laughs> His list of media heads include Aduli Ingelene, special advisor and publicity, uh, media and publicity, Tunde Rahman. SSAP Media, Tokwe Ajayi, SSAP Media and Publicity, Abdulaziz, Abdulaziz, SSAP Print Media, Otega Ogara, SSAP Digital and New Media, Segundada, SAP Social Media, and the rest of them. This one, if you continue to call them, hey, Chigeji, Chigabo. And on the other hand, this is part, okay, this is apart from the Minister of Information and others appointed in the ministry to drive the propaganda agenda. Wahala, no, they finish. Cutting off the cost of governance, this man keep on increasing them. Shwaibu said, it was laughable that Tunumbu, who vowed to hit the ground running from the first day, had held only one cabinet meeting since his inauguration nearly 120 days ago. He asked Nigerians to remain patient as the Supreme Court prepares to commence work on the election petition appeal. Tunumbu removed the petrol subsidy without any plan whatsoever and decided to hand over 
a few bags of rice to millions of poor Nigerians. Till that, the minimum wage remains 30,000 naira or 31 dollar per month based on the parallel market exchange rate. Change the bunda. This is the punishment Nigerians are facing because the election management body failed to do its work on February 25th. This is a manifestation, manifestation of the words of the Holy Book which says, When the righteous lead, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people will suffer. In the meantime, we ask Nigerians to remain patient as the judiciary authorities do their job in righting the electoral fraud that has brought Nigerians to their knees. So, my wonderful beautiful brothers and sisters and Nigerian people in general, I beg you, now here we go take back break. Beg you to use this one to step down. I'm coming back again with another blockbuster. Help me share this message, like, comment, and do what? Do the necessary things by subscribing to my channel for better video as we proceed. Have a nice day, and a good Lord bless this week for us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be right back again with another blockbuster. Game